what defines each of us is not how brightly we shine in the light of success, but how hard we battle in the shadow of adversity. Valentino Perina grew up as millions of children across the country do in American suburbia, where often football is not just a common bond, but a way of life. You know, we got treated very highly, you know, with the newspapers, you know, with the Boston Globe, stuff like that. You know, even the teachers would, you know, give you that, like, how you doing, like, how you doing today, like, you have a game tomorrow, like, good luck, all that stuff. Like, around the school, we were, we were treated very highly. Reading, Massachusetts, just 10 miles outside of Boston, is a perennial football powerhouse. And at an early age, Perina had already began making a name for himself, scoring touchdowns at will, a habit that would prove to continue throughout the rest of his varsity career. Entering his senior year, Perina was one of the most highly touted prospects in Massachusetts. Heavily recruited, he was expected to lead Redding to yet another state championship. But to Perina and his teammates, it meant more than just another ring. For one of his coaches, it was a matter of life and death. Special year for my, my grade and you know the school, actually in the program, was um, we had a coach and a friend of a coach and a friend of mine that came my freshman year. Um, his name was Mike Boyd. He was a young guy. He came you know, around 24 years old, 25 years old. He came to coach the freshman and, and moved up with us. And he, he was just an, you know, an idol for all of us. Mike Boyd coached at Reading with the same passion that he had always played with at the high school a decade before. But soon after his return to the Rockets sideline, it became clear that something wasn't right. And he always had this raspy voice, and we never really understood why. So before our last game, he, he sat us all down and had a meeting with us. And um, he had a speech and told us that uh, he told us that he was diagnosed with lung cancer. And he was 24 years old. You know, he told us that we didn't have that long to live. Boyd was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer, and the sickness quickly spread to his brain. He, he told us that, you know, he didn't have long to live and all that stuff, so... I kind of grew to be friends with him throughout the years, and he was like my mentor and a lot of stuff. Although he fought the disease with all the heart and determination that made him an icon for his team. For the first time in his life, his will wasn't enough. He passed away at 29 years old, a month before the 2009 season. You would never see a snap. My senior year, we kind of dedicated you know, the season to him because you know, the other thing we would talk about was after him. He was only projected to live like a year after he got diagnosed. And he ended up living like... He ended up living four years longer than expected because he would tell everyone and his parents would tell us that the only thing that kept him alive was us. <laughs> Redding kicked off the season in typical fashion. Five wins in five games. But midway through the sixth, Perina's world once again crashed down around him. Um, the day was October 25th. It was a Friday night playing against Belmont. And the play was 25 buck X. Uh, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those things that I'll, I'll never forget. And I replay that play in my head all the time. I went down. You know, I held my knee, and that, like, one of the first things I noticed was just how silent. You know, the crowd went, and you know, the team, my teammates went, and just people around me, just everyone went dead quiet. And the only thing that I could hear was, you know, my own scream. Every ligament in his knee torn, Perino was faced with a harsh reality. His football career, the only life he had known since he was eight, might very well be over. 
you know, and that weekend came by, you know, the weekend of 26th, and, you know, the next couple of weeks I knew, you know, the diagnosis was a torn ACL. You know, I had the Globe calling me, the Herald calling me, you know, the Chronicle calling me. I had a lot of websites and, you know, we, like weird people calling me that I don't really know that well, you know, like school things, people like that. And I just didn't, you know, want to talk to anybody. My As Reading forged their way to a second state championship game, and Perina's knee rendered virtually useless until surgery. The thought of Boyd weighed heavy on his heart. And you know, when I, when I got hurt, you know, I was disappointed in myself that I couldn't, you know, finish the season <sighs> for him. And, uh, you know, I'll just, just never forget, I'll never forget that. Opting to take a cortisone shot to temporarily relieve the pain, Perina strapped his high school shoulder pads on one last time. And four quarters later, as thousands of Reading faithful looked on in Foxborough, Perina and his teammates hoisted the trophy towards the heavens, where their former coach was undoubtedly looking on, his legacy echoing high into the rafters of Gillette Stadium. Three years later, and Perina's career has not been without challenges. After signing with Sacred Heart University to play college football, he worked his way up the depth chart, clawing his way back into the footballing world. But in late spring of his sophomore season, Perina collisioned with teammate and close friend Connor Candido in practice, and an all too familiar feeling shot through his leg. A feeling he was sure he would never have to experience again. I tossed my way and I came up and filled it. And Valentino was actually the fullback. And um, normally on a play like that, like I have to come up and set it pretty hard. So I did that. <clears throat> it was a pretty good collision. And Tino on the way down buckled his knee and immediately just started screaming. Um, it was uh, it was painful. It was painful from for my eyes to watch that, to see like I did that to him. Um, one of the things that was rushing through my mind was, you know, my career could be done. You know, I could hang up the cleats for the rest of my life and, you know, give up the sport that I've been doing since I was five years old because of injuries, not because of choice, but because of a physical, you know, physical attribute that was stripped. And, um, you know, that feeling was, you know, it's something that you can't describe ever. For a football player to tear their ACL, it's just, it's honestly unexplainable, to be completely frank. It's just a feeling like none other. I'm just, the passion that goes alongside with football and just the grind and just everything that goes into it, summers, sweat, tears, everything. Six months and a second surgery later, Perina is on course for a full recovery. And the future, he says, looks bright. He is reminded of his late coach and friend every day. A shirt hangs above his bed in Boyd's memory. And in bold letters across the back are words that Boyd once lived by. Words that Perina continues to live by in his honor. Never quit. Even the stars, they burn. Some even fall to the earth We got a lot to learn God knows we're worth it No, I won't give up It is said that life is only truly known to those who suffer, lose, and endure. And Perina has had his fair share of each. But his story of courage and determination is one we can all aspire to. I'll be here patiently.